On LeetCode, you can find questions on specific topics. Also on LeetCode, there are weekly contests. It is a way to evaluate your learning curve. So the subjects that we have are operating system. In object oriented programming, there are certain questions like when would you make a constructor as private? These are some tricky questions. I will try to make a playlist for such tricky questions. In the database management system, you will be asked questions on normalization. You can go to SQL and start solving problems. They can make a web development project or they can make an Android project. So you can kind of take the interview of your friend and after this, you can ask your friend to be the interviewer and you could be the interviewee. Hey there, welcome back to Lead Coding. So this video is going to be a bit different. This video is very important for those undergraduates who are looking forward to crack a good internship offer or a good placement offer and for those engineers who want to shift from a service-based company to a product-based company or maybe from SD1 to SD2. So in this video, I will be discussing the subjects that you need to know before you appear for an interview apart from the data structures and algorithms of course and the resources from where you can learn them. So we are going to go step by step and we will be covering them up and it will be better if you keep a pen and a notebook with you so that you can make notes while you watch the video. Also at the end of the video there is a giveaway so watch the complete video and follow the steps to participate in the giveaway. That being said let us start with the data structures and algorithms the very first thing that you need to know. So there's a very good website called LeetCode. So on LeetCode you can find questions on specific topics. Like if you want to solve questions on dynamic programming then you can go to the dynamic programming section and you can find plenty of problems there. So here we can sort the problems according to the difficulty level. Here these are sorted according to the easy, medium and hard difficulty level. Also on our channel, there are plenty of resources for data structures and algorithms. You can find several playlists based on the topics. This is for DFS, this is for design and this is the hard playlist based on the difficulty level. You can go to one of the video and watch the video from here. Let us denote it by D of 1 and at the description of each video, you will find the link of the question. So you can go to the question try to solve it by your own and if you are not able to solve it then you can come back and watch the entire video so that you can understand the solution better even if you are able to solve a question then also you can refer to the video because sometimes it might be possible that your approach is different than ours and it is always better to know more number of approaches also on lead code there are weekly contests you can participate in the weekly contest so it is a way to evaluate your learning curve after the contest, if you are not able to solve some problems, I will be uploading the solutions to those problems on my channel right after the contest and you can go and watch those videos. Alright, so the next resource that we have is geeks for geeks On geeks for geeks you can find questions which are asked in a specific company. So for example, if you have, some interview, if you have an interview with Amazon, you can go and solve your questions from the list Amazon. Then we have code forces. So this is a comparative programming platform. It is optional because comparative programming itself is optional. If you want to do it, if you have time to do it, let's say if you are in the first year or in second year and if you have plenty of time, then you can. Of course, you should do comparative programming because it is a sport and at the same time, it is going to enhance your problem solving skills. So when we talk about the first round in the coding interview while the company visit our campus, so that round is mainly based on comparative programming because most of the companies what they do is they simply assign the task of shortlisting the student to let's say hacker rank or hacker earth and then they will provide us with comparative programming questions so it is always good to do comparative programming questions i'm not asking you to become a candidate master or a master but do it up to a certain extent if you have time otherwise you can skip this now for those who don't know the basics so for them, for them there is a course, so there is a course on Geeks for Geeks, you can go and find this course, this data structures and algorithms course. Let me show you the content of the course, here is the content. So it covers the basic concepts like string sorting, metrics, hashing, linked list, stack, queue, then some advanced data structures such as segment trees and binary index tree and disjoint set. So it will cover your basics if you are new to data structures and algorithms. 
After this, you can participate in the contest and you can refer to the videos that we upload on regular basis. So if you want to get this course, apply the discount coupon FRAZGFG, you can get 10% off on this course. Alright, so now let's move on to the subjects. So the subjects that we have are operating system. So where to do operating system from? So there's a very good book for operating system called Operating System Concepts. This is by Galvin and you'll find that this book is really massive and there are so many pages here. But then it covers up the entire thing. This is the book that is used in our universities as well. So this is for operating system. In operating system you will be asked questions like what is synchronization? What is a critical section? And what is a deadlock? And how to handle certain deadlock? Apart from that there are some YouTube lectures as well available for this. But then those lectures are not as organized. So they are not going to cover everything. So you will have to look for it. Then we have for DBMS, Navate. Again, this is a huge book, but then it covers everything in detail. Now, these books are good for those who are actually preparing for their academics as well. Not for those who are going to appear for an interview in, let's say, one or two months. For them, it will be a huge burden. So for them, I will provide some notes in the description. If they already know the subject and everything then they can refer to the notes and they still want to refresh all the concepts because notes are just for the references. If you still remember everything then you can just briefly go through the notes. But if you want to refresh all your concepts then I will suggest you a course. Same with the computer networks as well. There's a book called Computer Networks by Tenenbaum. So this is a really great book. You can learn the concepts of computer networks from this book. So those who are really interested in reading the books can refer to these resources. And if you want to skip reading, then you can refer to this course over here. So this covers operating system, DBMS, computer networks. And let me show you the content of the course. This is just for 1500 rupees. And I think this is not much. So from here, you can learn all the concepts thread versus processes, the schedulings, all the scheduling algorithms and then you have database management system here. In the DBMS you have everything, you have SQL, you have database design, then you have indexing, the concurrency control transactions and all. Then you have computer networks here. So this course is covering all the theoretical topics except for the one that is object oriented programming. So for object oriented programming, there's a really compact book called Balaguru Swami. So I think I didn't paste that book over here. So that book is Balaguru Swami. Let me just search that for you. Balaguru Swami C++. So this is the book, this is a really compact book and the language of this book is really simple. You can just go through this book and this book will cover everything that you need for your object oriented programming interview. In object oriented programming there are certain questions like when would you make a constructor as private or when would you call the destructor explicitly. So these are some tricky questions and these are not covered in such books or not even in the classrooms. So for those questions I will try to make a playlist for such tricky questions. Like in the case of a singleton class when we make when we want to make a class as singleton then we will be making the constructor of this that class as private. So these are some tricky questions about which I will try to make a video. Then let us talk about the database management system. In the database management system, you will be asked questions on normalization that given a schema, tell the normalized form. And if it is not in a certain normalized form, then normalize it till this form. Or you will be asked questions on transactions or concurrency control. And the other part is SQL. So you could also be asked questions on SQL. So for that, we have some really good resources. So to practice SQL, you can practice it from hacker rank. So this is a really good resource. Let me just show you. 
so you can learn SQL from here so you can learn SQL you can go to SQL and start solving problems you can sort them according to the difficulty level or if you want to sort them according to the topics that you want to do so there's a really good resource to practice SQL another good resource is of course our lead code here also we have certain problems on the topic SQL I think you would find them somewhere in the problems I think this database here you can find some problems on SQL yeah so these are the questions that you can do to practice your SQL so next we have projects so if you want to shift a company or maybe shift from SD1 to SD2 then of course you will have a plenty of projects with you now the problem is with those who are going to appear for internships so for them they already don't have projects they can make a web development project or they can make an Android project it is very important that you make a project at least one project should be there in your resume why so because if you don't have a project the interviewer will have nothing to ask from your resume and he will simply ask questions from his side and that might go against you in your interview it is always better to be asked questions on the things that you have already done so you can mention some projects and then the interviewer will be interested in asking questions from that project and you will be also interested in answering questions from the things that you have already done so you can do a WebD project a machine learning project or maybe an Android project and you can mention it in your resume all right so I suggested you two courses so this is this I think is really important if you want to save time so this is covering up a lot of things and the price is also low and you can also use my coupon so the coupon code is FRAZGFG for 10% discount and apart from that if you want to learn data structures and algorithms if you don't know the basics then you can go for that course as well the data structures and algorithm course other than that if you want to learn system design and system design is for those who want to shift from one company to another company and for those who are already in industry some companies do ask system design such as uh, the coordination they have a specific round for system design so in such companies system design might be asked so you can learn system design from here so this is the course you can use the same coupon code here to get 10% discount here as well alright now talking about the things which are highly dependent on the company so first of all few companies they do have the aptitude round they do ask the aptitude questions even in the further rounds so these companies are the Goldman Sachs the Morgan Stanley sometimes sometimes it is Samsung and even the Qualcomm so these companies they do ask these questions and these questions you can learn from geeks for geeks as well apart from this so the company sometimes they ask puzzles as well so puzzles are not that typical they will they will guide you if you get stuck somewhere but even after that if you want to practice it you can practice it from geeks for geeks again so it is available for free so you can do apt you can do puzzles you can do the company wise questions from geeks for geeks and one very important tip that I want to give you is that when you're learning the data structures and algorithms this thing cannot be done in one month or so so you have to give a lot of time to this you have to practice them consistently daily so for that what you should do is you should make group or if you are not much into groups then you can have one partner with you so you can share the platforms on which you are going to code so let's say you can choose lead code and you can tell your partner to do questions from geeks for geeks or maybe code forces and after each contest or maybe you can have weekly meetings in weekly meetings you can discuss the questions that you find interesting so you can kind of take the interview of your friend and after this you can ask your friend to be the interviewer and you could be the interviewee so like this you can share the questions across different platforms with your friends and this really helps in learning also there's not a top-down approach like you must be thinking that you will cover the entire theory and then you will start participating in the contest so that is not going to work so what you have to do is sometimes you have to solve questions and if you get stuck in some questions 
and if you know that this problem would be solved if I knew this particular topic then you can go and read that topic so it's not always top down it might be possible that you do a problem first and then go and learn the theory also I am trying to be consistent on my channel to upload the videos so if you give some amount of time from your day to watch videos on my channel that would really help you a lot because this way you are going to learn new approaches which I am using which I have learned through these years of coding so now let us talk about the giveaway so I am going to give away six geeks for geeks courses three of these courses are the data structures and algorithms and three are Java foundation now what step you have to follow in order to participate in the giveaway contest the first step is to go to the description you will find a link to a LinkedIn post go to the LinkedIn post and comment there the name of the course that you want so let's say if you want the Java foundation write the name Java foundation or Java and if you want the data structures and algorithm course just write DSA or data structures and algorithms and write a line as to how this course is going to help you and if you don't have a LinkedIn account then you can comment on YouTube as well so you just have to write the name of the course and a line mentioning how this course is going to help you I'm going to announce the result of the giveaway as soon as I hit the 4000 subscriber count if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification to our latest videos also don't forget to like the video as well thank you